Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, we're back on the Dog Spot live session. This has been a very long break for me uh, since I've been on a live session here. Absolutely privileged to be here with Dr. Ravi. Uh, he's someone I've really looked up to uh, for the last many, many years since the days I started going to dog shows across India. I've seen him in the ring and outside the ring both. Uh, a thorough gentleman, and uh, he's been a wonderful ring steward and uh, an exhibitor and a breeder. Uh, more importantly, let me introduce him as uh, somebody who has spearheaded the whole uh, Indian native breed uh, promotion and uh, who's played a very important role in bringing them up to speed with how where they are today and in getting them a global recognition as uh, breeds across the across the world and working with the FCI and other clubs across the world. He is an avid aviculturist. He's got uh, a beautiful collection of birds at home uh, and he really gives him gives it all his heart and time. And it is wonderful to have him over today. And today we would cover the Indian breed Rajapalem uh, through our discussions. So it would be fantastic to hear from Dr. Ravi. Ravi, welcome to the show, and it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to be able to host you here today. Welcome. Good evening, Cherian. Nice to meet you all here in the dog spot. And it's my pleasure to talk to you all and address the whole public to get knowledge about the native breeds here. OK. Uh, we've, uh, have, we have a uh, you know, handful of Indian native breeds uh, at least at the moment, recognized within the country with the Kennel Club of India. Uh, could you list a few of these popular native breeds and the work that has been going into recognizing them and bringing in the standard as a breed? Okay, Chirin, see, now as for the KCA is done, we have recognized Rajapalayam, Sunni, Chipipare, Kombe, these dogs are from southern Tamil Nadu. And we have okay. caravan hound, Mughal hound, which is found in central Karnataka and Maharashtra. Then we okay. have uh, Rampur hound, which is found in little more northern area. So we have, and we have Pasmis also. So we have, so far we are recognized, we have recognized nine breeds in our KCI. We still have okay. some more breeds which are just coming up. We have John and Gear, breeds like John and Gear and others are. We are finding it out. There are some more Himalayan, um, Himalayan giant dogs are there. Himalayan massives right. are there. Still, we have to recognize. So far, nine breeds we have selected. We have a good population of them. Number of standards. We have also set some standards for them. And it is being promoted very well. And it is going on. We have so far, the KCA has recognized nine breeds. OK. And now, uh, after this, now pass. Tell me. No, I have seen you with. Uh, yeah, yes. I have seen you with many breeds other than the Indian breeds before. And then I saw that you have okay. forayed into Indian breeds. And uh, it could be that I noticed it much later or that, you know, uh, could you tell us how you got yeah. involved with the Indian breed and what was your first Indian breed? Okay, about? okay. Okay, that's correct. See, the Indian breed is almost been with us in decades. And my ancestors also we used to have, since we were coming from a agriculture family, living in... Right. The Western Ghats of Tamil Nadu and from Maine is our agriculture. We used to have all type of native breeds here. And maybe 30, 40 years before, the, there used to be uh, dog hunting. These dogs are used for small games here. Okay. Later stage, 19, after 1974, when it, the hunting was abolished and the, thing, and the law came in, it was all stopped. And these are pure bridley. They are kept for guarding and guarding the not only guarding the thing, it's guarding the herds of whatever we are like cattle. Herds. So these native breeds have been with us from ancestral things. Us and not only here, all the villages areas mostly. So we used to have okay. always a passion towards them from early stages. But unfortunately, those days we were not recognizing them in shows and everything. So automatically we used to show our fancy breeds, whatever whatever we had, so many breeds we had. So okay. lately, past 10 years, slowly we came into Native breeds started grasping, grasping, and one, when these clubs, we made a club called Native Breed Specialty Club, just okay. first club in India to have a, exclusively for a native breed, 
and we have been for seven years. We started before, even before our club could be registered. Right. We had a specialty show at Coimbatore just for Native Bridge before getting a special permission from KCI to right. issue CCs without having club. We you know right. to kind of club. We started and we had 142 dogs present in that was uh, uh, 2014. That right. year. And we had a nice so, number of dogs, and from the right. promotion started from there. I've always seen yes. you, uh, you know, promoting uh, people to have Indian breeds and promoting the club. So I think this has been part of the activities of the club. But while you are a dog lover and yes. while you like a certain breed and you enjoy keeping the breed, uh, the responsibility of driving a club that kind of regulates or assists people with the breed and to bring in uniformity and a breed standard together which can then be taken to a global platform is a huge responsibility and I would assume involves a lot of work. And especially because not, a lot of these were not registered as, uh, you know, for a pedigree purposes and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> I would say that the whole pedigree is being built and recorded uh, from a, you know, history perspective uh, right now. How have you gone about that? Uh, has it been difficult okay. or how have you reached out to all yes, of sir. these people, especially when they are in villages? Correct. See, once we just before you start, maybe before these uh, native breed clubs were developed, we used to have in group that time these cyclones used to be in group 10. And right. Very rarely we'll find uh, at least two or three dogs to be in a show, a native. Not even two or three, very, very less. The two in South right. and North, you will not find any dogs also. So, slowly because uh, we were having. We are in group 10 where we use uh, Afghan on Bipets and uh, uh, Palupis and huge other strong breeds which are mm. competing and we well trained and for the competition. When our people from this rural area they bring these dogs for the competition, mm. which was not that they're not uh, trained well or uh, they were not uh, saying groomed well, so we used, they used right. to never win. So, late after right. maybe a few years, we all decided at KCA, we, the committee decided. And they brought a group called 11. So only the native breeds could be there. It's a good promotion. So right. when it came a group 11, we are not going to compete with the Safiyan Hound or Vipet and extra dogs. So we right. had a chance for every exhibit to win among that. At least you get two winnings to stand in the right. lineup, winning in lineup. Right. It was right. a very big promotion given by the KCI. And it was brought well and it's gone. And in Mike as I was, uh, KCI has given me a special... Mm permission to certify the native breeds. Select okay. and certify the native breeds to the standard. Okay. For six years I've been doing this work, traveling to every villages, every right. often at least four times I travel to the hook and corner of the place where there are even if they say the ten dogs are there, I travel there. Go when inspect did them try to like Ravi? How many years this ago did you last and now it's four, four years. Now we can say four years. Okay. It's four years since. And almost I have certified, I have given pedigree, unknown pedigree to more than 2,000 dogs so far. 2,000 wow. dogs selected to the standard. And okay. in that, at least I can see now, lot of people coming in after seeing the shows, they are also getting interested in breeding. Right. And we have educated those people how to, they have to breed with the standards and so still we are going, we are promoting because it's from rural place, you have to promote. So now, for example, when we, they used to breed Kani and Chippy for two different breeds, they were interbreeding and producing. Now we have educated them how to breed them. The common man, they have to come. So and then so far, and we are still doing it. Still, it's not reached properly. I'm saying it will take time. It's not very easy to do immediately. Right. So we are having classes and we are conducting shows. Right. Not in cities now. We are we have gone to the rural place to conduct shows. The promotion is going on. So, uh, and when you well. travel to the now, right? Tell me. When you travel to the uh, the rural villages and when you find these dogs, uh, there would be a lot of them who are as close as possible to uh, probably now recorded breed standard, and there could be some which are in the you know periphery of those breed standards. So, how do you kind of un yes. unify this together and uh, communicate to all these different people who are spread across the country? to say that you have to bring it together and breed it together to come to this particular standard. How have you gone about that? Yes. 
today and say it is not very easy to convince the public in different regions. Right. See, they say there will be some difference. They ask, sir, why are you not giving us this? Sir, KCA has got it. We cannot go to everyone. KCA, mm -hmm. after studying strongly with which is available and we have made a standard. Mm -hmm. So there are people and we are not decided by ourselves. We are taking uh, I, um, all this thing from our seniors also. It is not just that. Standards are not only decided by me or anything. It's all right. by our seniors and right. senior extinct old right. senior breeders are there. So we sat right. with them and made a standard. So we cannot change anything for according to that. So I used to go to the rural place. Some group will say, no, sir, this type is there. But when we explain, they will not understand. They think right. they are dogs, but that is correct. So we, as a set of standards, we are promoting. But how the promotion goes is, when hmm. they bring their dogs to the show, right. their dogs will not get it winning because it's not on the standard. So automatically, right. they'll go to the normal standard, which is going to the standard. Right. So we cannot teach them by saying, there are people stubborn. No, no, my dog is the best. This is our type. Right. Once they want to get some winnings and other things, they have to come to the standard. So the promotion starts there also. Okay. This is how we have to bring the people. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, so from that perspective, from a uh, Indian breed uh, perspective, dog shows become all the more important to bring out awareness amongst the breeders itself, isn't it? Yes, sure. Correct. See, before we used to, right. I, now, as I said, yeah, two or three. Tell me. Right. And uh, this is the groundwork you're doing as a native breed in the native place of where the breed are, a breed is found. Now, taking it to a worldwide platform, uh, being recognized by kennel clubs abroad and educating them as to what is our breed standard. How did you go about that? And where are we on that process? And how has it been uh, the journey for you? It would have been a great experience because you're literally bringing a new breed getting listed in the world platform, right? See, then such a big country, India is a huge country, and we are having so many clubs all over India. Having right. see, we have almost 85 clubs in India, spread mm -hmm. all over India. And now we have, uh, maybe we are conducting more than 100, 100 150 shows. These some clubs are conducting two or more than two shows in a year. And mm -hmm. we see only our thing, and now, past four years in southern, all four. States, we see a lot of Indian breeds have come into Group 11. North is just picking up because the southern breeds are just reaching them now. And right. once we have Group 11, people mm -hmm. say always is a winning ox. People want to show their dog, get best of breed, and whatever it is. When Group 11 came, even the fancy breeders of whatever they're bred from different countries, they wanted to have two dogs of this to show right. and win in Group 11. So the right. promotion from the lower level has jumped to all the um, that imported breeds, what we say, all the imported breeds, what people, higher-end right. people used to have, they have also taken native breeds. They are showing them all over India and promoting. See, when it's showing the promotion, when it goes to, see, the southern Rajapalayam or Kani goes to northeast and central north, they would have seen these right. breeds. Absolutely. The promotion comes. And last... Two years I have seen most of the big breeders have taken native breeds and they are breeding and showing them all over India when it okay. came up to the other FCI. So what we said okay. when we are not having, we want to get our dogs recognized by FCI. We had a right. group of FCI and I took the field work. I did the DNA for uh, taking all different DNA samples, uh, breed standards and everything. And I've taken, we had one of our um, FCA uh, judges who was in, in the uh, selecting committee of uh, breeds, so we took him to the. I took almost 150 dogs to Bangalore to show them. 150 Bangalore dogs of Bangalore. We took it. The, right. Yes, you would, uh, you would have seen it. And to produce yeah, before the I foreign judges, just saying we have also. And they were satisfied. They are given ideas how for us, even the judges have given us. What are the ways we have to proceed? And it, now it is almost 60% into the FCA level. Maybe the coming mm -hmm. year, along with the Raja Palayam, again, Mudal and Karen are also going to join us for the FCA. Hope it all happens in a year's time. When everything, because maybe because of COVID, we have little breaking, we had a, a, a little break in it. 
Surely we will be in a one year time. Rajapalayam will be there, followed by other our beautiful mudal hounds and caravan hounds also will be into this. Right. So now uh, we would go uh, right into describing uh, the appearance of a Rajapalayam dog and the breed standard, oh. so that we can kind of have a visual on the dog. Um, and okay. uh, you know, uh, so let, let let us understand the breed. And uh, here is a picture of a beautiful Rajapalayam dog that is being stacked by you. I suppose this is uh, in the showgrounds in Uti, I guess, is it? Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. This, see, okay. Uh, so, see the standard tell, as I do. Yes. Pardon, tell me. Could you tell okay, us about the breed? The, the way the color has yes. evolved, the see, pink yes. nose that it yeah, has. Yeah. See, the Rajapalayam, the breed name has come from a rural village called Rajapalayam in South Tamil Nadu. It is okay. an ancient breed. It has been actually the history says these breeds were it was traveled by a group of Andhra Pradesh people who came and settled. They called Rajus who were settled in Rajapalayam and in and around Rajapalayam in South Tamil Nadu. It was believed mm -hmm. that it came along with them and they used to keep these dogs in or maybe 100 150 years before they used to have that. There was also some pictures captured in. 100 years old pictures are also available. They're having these dogs. So the right. origin can be said it would have come from there and it is, was only found in and around Rajapalayam. That now it is a Taluk headquarters. Maybe around 20 villages around them, they used to have this breed and mostly with those family. Okay. This is the origin what we have been from the beginning. We have been mm -hmm. the standard. It is a strong dog. It was used once for good hunters and it was a good watchdog, watchdog for homes, houses, as well as a cattle watchdog. More than hunting, it was a good watchdog and it is very easily trainable to the people. It can adjust, okay. even though they have the scent hound, sight hound uh, characters, they are very friendly with, with, with the family members. And the okay. appearance as we go, they grow up to their size of standard is from. 27 to 28 inches is the okay. standard height and it okay. is a muscular dog having a head it's a v-shaped head the ears will be like by what we say in public button ears it is a v-shaped ear also falling straight inside the nose okay. will be a pink pink nose and the pigments also the uh lip pigments are so pink usually other dogs will say disqualification it's a, in this breed right. it's a pure white breed We'll have a okay. pink pigmentation. The eye, okay. eye is the main thing. It should be almond, yellowish almond. We okay. usually find some dogs with blue eye or pale white is that is really disqualified because they become deaf. So since it's a pure okay. white breed, they have the tendency of becoming deaf also. So this okay. is how we have to select and breed them to without to get deaf because the white with the albino itself we have a lot of trouble in any breed. Right. It's a pure breed. We have to select right. that. So definitely you have to be careful with that and not inbreed them. So it okay. is very good. And the top line, as you see, all will say what? It has got a high back. It is not a top line, it's not straight, high back. Oh, and it's a high see, back. The withers, yes, see you just with the movement, the withers and the back will be on straight line, there'll be a slight dip on the center. The withers right. and the hind will be same. So there'll be a small dip. Okay. And the tail is curved, but it should not come and fall on the back. It is okay. curved, but not it should not fall on the back. Okay. Okay. So, and as for this thing, and the legs, uh, the front leg is as usual, it's a normal thing, deep chest it has. And the back, it is not uh, lengthy, you should not prolong your, since okay. it's got high back, you've got okay. long, uh, your legs, hind legs, you shouldn't take it too back to stack them. Okay. So, so other breeds we be putting them long and showing them. This should be. It's okay. Like they are meant to be quite Yes. And if you put little closer only, uh -huh. so you'll find the back. Uh -huh. And we have a. It is little not to shown for straight, but slightly as you see it here. Okay. And the deep chest, and it comes only in one color, pure white. Sometimes okay. we'll have some dottings, ten percent to fifteen percent dottings, light. Fawn dottings on the ears and somewhere in the side of head and under chest. That is allowed. 
not okay. too much slight dot so this is the okay. appearance of the dot okay the brief sudden appearance comes almost slow all right and uh, in terms of uh, you know temperament how are they with their temperament see that's why as i said temperament they are cytons they have that character of cyton mm -hmm. you can train them to be a guard dog a friendly dog or even a biter it is purely on our uh, you training no okay. so yes now those days it was a watchdog hunting now now people right. are keeping them in home like a doberman or a boxer it's kept well in home with the family members it is very good at them and right. but they are more sticking to the family members when they see strangers right. they have a okay sometimes they can even bite strangers when well, as they train them okay so uh, while we are at this uh, before we go further we will take a couple of questions that i had asked so um kyati has asked uh, please can we know the name of the community that was mentioned so uh, the community of people who moved from uh, andhra to the south with the dogs that oh, is was, uh, yes that's called rajus rajus i believe okay, they are rooted from west godavari west godavari region they okay. ancestors they are come from west godavari region and moved to the south tamil nadu a place called rajapalayam okay they have been right. brought by them in years ago okay uh, we have another question on the difference between rajapalayam and mudalhound but i think we will keep that question for later because uh, suhas they are absolutely two different breeds uh, the only commonality between them are that they are both indian native breeds they come from two different regions and rajapalayam is totally different that right yeah, absolutely they are uh, uh, mudals are very point uh, very uh, very clearly sight hound looking dogs they are skinnier taller uh, you know uh, very different dogs so i think totally uh, different. yes uh, yes uh, rajapalayams are uh, you know um, a slightly more filled in uh, more pleasing to the eyes in a certain way uh from a pet perspective etc so uh, we will <laughs> we will move on to uh, the next question uh, ruhi has mentioned uh, since our honorable prime minister has spoken about our indigenous breeds people have been inquiring about these breeds more how far are these breeds a good fit for the common households i think this is a very relevant question we should take um Ravi, yeah. i already been telling this thing it's a uh, people now the awareness has come and i see lot of people having nice so you can keep rajapalayam and you can have there's a breed called combay and oh, yeah and caron hound these three breeds can be easily kept as like any other dogs in home what we see difference in mudal hound chippy pare and kanni they are more still more on hound character they have the character of howling more mm. of howling which we cannot okay. have in near yes, closed compound house because the neighbors will get disturbed they are the yeah. because they howl there's more of howling so that is a yes. problem so we cannot have in a city or a uh, populated place which will disturb people whereas these right. rajapalayam uh, kombe caravan all are very suitable to be kept as you train them you can have them as a good pets in your home and good guard dogs also right as while we have that... spoken and yeah now while we say that i have to Tell make it clear when uh, dr ravi says home it is not an apartment that he's really talking of uh, he's talking of these dogs require fair amount of exercise and workout so compound uh, he will yeah. good compound yeah so they need a uh, uh, pretty serious uh, physical exercise to keep them contained and calm and composed so uh, these are not apartment dogs for sure uh, i would say that you know what what would you think of uh, uh, rajapalayam as a, a, you know indoor dog Uh, although you would end up giving a little bit of exercise oh. does two walks a day help correct see see if you can if they can good morning and evening bring them for a walk and keep them you can also have in your flat that means indoor i'm not talking about a high big flat maybe right. closed door houses if you can exercise them after the morning evening outside or run about with me on your by some parks everything you can have yes. rajapalayam and Combay in your homes also. It is mm -hmm. developed like any other dog. Now they change something. It is 
when you can have a doberman or a boxer you can have them also all right but a walk in the park for half an hour does not really cut it guys you really have to give them i'm uh, talking about i'm talking about for a pet parent i'm talking this for a pet, yeah. pet parent yeah so you really have to work them but if you do that you can really have them as a pet in your house uh, but intensive physical exercise free leash running etc will be very very necessary for these guys so um in terms of trainability where do they stand uh, have you had some experiences uh, training these dogs yes. and uh, yeah first of all it is not very easy as any other whatever other breeds of we have imported breed because mm -hmm. they have the still or uh, they have the hunting sense still in their thing but if you have a parents with you and if you breed and start from the younger age right from mm -hmm. the younger age you can since they little shy dogs are still you can train them well show them very beautifully in show round they are very obedient we have been now past a uh, couple of years you see raja bellum free standing they stand in free like a doberman they stand so the trainability is left to us but little more dedication uh, compared to other dogs little more dedication maybe another 15 percent you have to work harder you can mm -hmm. it's not that you cannot do that we have seen dogs standing free uh, with leash also like any doberman i think they are able to do it when one person mm -hmm. is able so it is also we can do it. and the raja bellum Uh, last year, you know, the a couple of years, dog of the Indian dog, we have seen Raja Balayam only. Dog of Indian breed has been won by Raja Balayam for a couple of years. Right. It's really easy to train them. Okay. So while we are at the uh, discussion of trainability and temperament, I wanted to discuss use of Indian breeds as working dogs in institutional use. So let's say the military and the police and. Uh, in the airports and everywhere, uh, has it? Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about it? Yes, correct. Uh, to be frank, see these are sighthounds. Okay. Uh, so they are see the uh, the other uh, larger hounds. They are long on legs. Right. So it is good for the military and the higher mountain area and military and everything. It is not that enough to be kept for. a uh, bomb squad because mm -hmm. i was saying and they have to go into the small places for scenting and finding it out so for that right. police purpose it's not much uh, you can see maybe you have to develop other breeds but right. for uh, our like bs military in the mountain region right. these dogs are much because they can scent they can run they are fast enough to go move everywhere so now you know as you know some our bsfs Uh, border security forces have taken some puppies, and some military has taken some puppies. And even I had a news today inquiry with so, from the south. Some police were asking me, "What is this?" We said, "We'll give a trial to you. You try. We are giving dog." They said, "We will from our club. We will present you. Try. If it is all good, right. sending and doing, it, we'll also be great." Right. So anything right. is by first testing them. Right. Casey has a very active uh, obedience trials that happens. Have you started seeing Indian breeds being brought into obedience trials by competitors? Not yet. Sir. Still, not no. a single dog has come into obedience. The pure breeds. We have seen okay. some cross breeds come into obedience, but there is no pure breed so far. Maybe in a couple of years we'll try that also to bring it forward. Okay. So uh I, I mean I I recently happened to read that uh, I think BSF uh, B, uh the military has uh taken some caravan hounds or mudal hounds into the army but yes, in of terms course. of yeah in, in terms of the real use of them uh you know where in what kind of situ situations do you think they can be put to use put to work in military what purpose as far as we know we don't have uh sniffing dogs we are not there I don't think they are using they using to maybe to chase some people because they are going they need a scent they have good scenting capacity so okay when it is well trained in uh, hunting also they scent and go and hunt this animal so okay when they move into the jungle we can find scent uh, maybe the uh, any one any enemies in hiding or thing they can find it out so i think but uh, maybe now primarily that's what we are 
so maybe okay. this year yeah. we will know the practical difficulties of what's going to happen in the military because our dogs are trained they are taken last year it is trained and it will be in use this year mm hmm so on well we have a lot of and our prime minister has also advised everyone every department to maximum utilize indian breeds utilize right. indian breeds okay so uh, it has been a long journey for you and i think there is still more learning and uh, you know uh, results of your efforts that has to come back to it um i uh, look forward to seeing our indian breeds recognized on the global platform and uh, seeing them in the uh, international dog shows uh, i think uh, all the more i really yeah. now feel that, you know a dog shows can really play a big role especially when you're developing a breed rather than on breeds that are already developed and uh, look forward to hearing critiques at the dog shows and knowing more about these breeds at the dog shows and otherwise um uh, thank you so much for joining us ravi uh, we will just quickly look for no, a few please, questions please. if they have any yes uh, we have some questions coming in sorry before before we sign off uh somebody has asked uh, seema has asked if they are healthier than their purebred uh, foreign cousins so other for purebred dogs from I mean, abroad uh, 100% they are very healthy and they are uh, they have good resistance power very good okay. resistance power they are not very easily they don't be affected by any sickness okay it's not a, a very hardy dogs all right all right so the question per se is i think are they healthier than their pure breed uh, pure bred ca found, uh, foreign cousins yes or... but the word itself i said no they healthier means they are more uh, uh sturdy dogs they are okay. that's why they, they don't get sickness healthy means they never go for compared to those dogs they're not they don't get sickness the resistance right. power is very high so they help you that oh. means it's very healthy okay and uh, we have a question from shaiju why blindness and deafness is common with rajapala and puppies can you please give any valuable suggestion for the breeders to prevent this tragedy yes i told earlier you hmm. should not breed any dog with blue or pale eyes see they are okay. almost as we know any breed albino the word albino itself brings all of trouble that yeah. and this only is to be frank i think this is the only dog breed where we see full white with pink nose even we have other uh, breeds white white dogs are available but with black nose they this have nose, black nose since this breed they have to be very the prawn for this albino this more of albino so you okay. when you breed please do not breed with your blue or pale eyes if you make it then you will 100% you have the puppies produced will be deaf so one now also in your breeding when you find any deaf puppy try mm -hmm. don't breed them repeat breed them with right. any other dog so just you keep them as a pet solely or when you give to some give to some pet people see that they don't be you neutralize them and give them that will be the best way to solve the problem because you give them right. someone they'll try to breed it again you are bringing back when you find okay. But you're breeding two dogs. When you find deafness is more than fifty percent, next time don't breed with that particular male and female. Change the line. Mm -hmm. So okay. now the eradication. When we started, we used to have thirty percent of deafness. Now it has come to ten percent, wow. according to what I have studied everywhere. The deafness has come to ten percent. Even if you study But properly and do, we can eradicate. Right. But this uh, deafness is also a feature that you see while breeding Dalmatians, also, isn't it? Again, see Dalmatian also, but Dalmatian not as much as this Rajapala. But does not Dalmatian has got other color pigmentations. So right. This is pure white. The word albino in any breed. See the mm. what is albino? We say in other breeds is it's a pigment deficiency. It right. becomes an albino. Mm. In any, see we have white white uh, tigers that uh, some birds are pure white. They become albino. The word albino. Yes, scientific name where it becomes you lose pigments and becomes white. So Rajapalayam mm. is almost a breed with white. So we must mm. not encourage breeding these these uh, defective dogs. Right. So uh, I think uh, we are. Uh, that's all with the questions. Uh, just for all the viewers, uh, Ravi lives near uh, Palachi in Tamil Nadu, and he's he lives on a very beautiful farm. 
with amazing birds around him and he's got some very beautiful indian breed uh, cows and oxen and he's got uh, beautiful falabella horses as well ponies uh, so it would be really worthwhile for you all to make an effort to travel down south and visit him at his wild country uh, resorts uh, ravi could you tell us a little bit about your resorts and what people get to see around your resort perfect or clear this area <laughs> is called indira have... gandhi wildlife sanctuary national park <laughs> okay it is, it is a big jungle one of the largest jungle next to us with uh, two sanctuaries anamalai wildlife sanctuary uh, tiger reserve and parambikulam is uh, okay. joining it is 1680 square kilometers of right. pure jungle rain forest and everything it is a nice place to people to visit wildlife but i'm okay. touched and populated please and you can see plenty of wildlife here this area okay. wild country resort is well is situated in my farm i have one kilometer from thing uh, is our jungle big jungle right and how so are your horses nature a lot of dams right and how are your ponies ponies we have lot of lovely ponies all are doing well bred well okay. <laughs> lovely okay. all right look forward thank to you seeing Paul, you for asking thank you ladies okay i thank the dog sports members for uh, inviting me for this interview and i think i thank everyone and all, all the viewers also <laughs> good all bye. right bye 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 thanks okay. everyone for joining us bye -bye. Uh, we will be back with another series on uh, another indian native breed uh, which would be close to his heart uh, most of them are so till then see you all and have a good evening and enjoy your the rest of the weekend thank you bye okay.